Hi guys, I'm uh, Stephen Sesselman. Some of you guys uh, might know me from uh, my postings on the forum. Um, I have a few ideas I wanted to share with you today and uh, get your feedback on. So I thought I'd uh, do this uh, quick little video. But before I do, I just want to thank you guys for uh, all the inspiration and all the um, all your posts on the forum, which uh, has no doubt contributed to uh, a lot of my ideas, and um, I think everybody everybody's really sharing a big effort on uh, Fuso.net, and um, should uh, uh, special thanks to uh, Richard and uh, all the founders of the of the group, who has made it possible for all of us to get together and uh, talk about all these exciting ideas in Fusion and. Um, come up with new ideas and, and all that. So uh, I've had a great time reading the forum since about uh, 2006 and um, I learned a lot from those that uh, were there before me and those that came after me and it's been a great place to, to learn stuff. Uh, certainly given me a lot of inspiration. A um, couple of things uh, come to mind here. Uh, that uh, some of us uh, have ideas and uh, go off on a tangent and try something a little different. Um, some of those ideas are no doubt original. Some of them are probably borrowed from other ideas that have been discussed on the forum. So um, I'd like to say that if um, you know, anybody feels that uh, their ideas have been compromised, then uh, you know, we try to be original at all times. Um, I'm going to, uh, going to talk about, um, uh, later I'm going to talk about Fixed Fusion, which is a new idea, a new invention that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, I haven't been able to share it with you because uh, there's been a patent pending, but that patent has now been published. And um, I thought I'd take the opportunity to, to share it with you and uh, get your feedback. Now, I know a lot of you don't like patents. Uh, and I don't particularly like them myself, but um, when you do have an original idea, you feel like you need to protect that idea. But that's by no means the, the end of the, uh, the line for, for such an idea, because it's only the beginning. Uh, if, if one of us were lucky enough to have a patent that works, uh, there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands, of opportunities for improvements to any idea that works. So I, rather than seeing it as the end of the Opportunity. I think it's the beginning of an opportunity, if anything. And that's if the damn thing works. Who knows? Uh, first, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, the work I did uh, a few years ago. And some of you might be familiar with it because uh, I posted uh, quite a bit on it uh, probably about two to three years ago. Uh, and that was my star fusion reactor. Uh, once again, I borrowed the concept from uh, the normal IEC or inertial electrostatic reactor, uh, but I, I modified it slightly. Um, and the star reactor was basically a hollow cathode reactor, which was insulated from the anode or from the shell by way of dielectric oil. And those of you who remember my videos, you remember this uh, cathode here, it had the glass accelerator tubes on either side, and the anode was essentially a wire basket that sat around the outside, something like this. Now, my star reactor was only partially successful. Uh, it did generate neutrons, um, but it was inherently unstable or instable. Um, in my naive thinking um, back a few years ago, and when I, when I first came up with the idea of star, uh, in my naive thinking I imagined the, uh, the ions would be generated um, at ground potential and somehow fall down to the cathode and stay there. Well, obviously that's not what happens. Um, when we're working in uh, an absolute uh, vacuum, or very close to an absolute vacuum, uh, there is no friction. There is no. Um, there's no reason for ions to fall down and stay stay down. These these are everyday experiences that we um, we experience um, in the in the macro world. In the micro world, things aren't that simple. Uh, you 
Uh, you guys who have read my previous posts um, have no doubt um, figured out that I'm big on potential. Uh, and electrostatic potential is uh, something that I focus on a lot. Um, atoms, atoms, when you separate them from their electron, have a positive charge. And um, a fusion reactor is an electrostatic potential energy well. So these atoms, they will be accelerated towards the cathode, towards the low potential, electrostatically low potential. The problem we have is, unlike the macro world, where we can bounce a ball like this, and where there's a lot of friction and air and other things that influence this bouncing, where we drop a ball on the floor and after a couple of small bounces it uh, stays on the floor. Uh, that doesn't happen in the, uh, in the micro world of the, uh, of the atoms. Uh, atoms are almost uh, perfect bouncy balls. They, um, there's, no, there's no friction, there is nothing there to stop them from bouncing. So when, when the atom falls into the electrostatic potential energy well, it inevitably remains in a stable orbit, whether that orbit is an oscillation up or down, or a figure of eight, or a, uh, some kind of an um, elliptical orbit, um, it, um, it's nevertheless stable. There's very little reason for it to lose energy. Even if it collides or, uh, or, or touches another, or goes close to another ion, it will be deflected, but it won't lose energy. So, the problem we generally have is that the ionization that happens in a fuser generally happens, in my opinion, generally happens at the fuser shell. This means that just about all the atoms, all the nuclei in your fuser has ground potential, because they have been created at ground potential. And what happens is, much like a pendulum, these atoms will indefinitely swing backwards and forwards between the, the shell and the grid. And only occasionally, when two nuclei collide in the middle, and the cross-section is very small, which is why your fusion output result is so low. Only when they collide, through that very small cross-section, do we get a fusion event. Now, scientists have come to the conclusion that it's the collision between ions that generate fusion. Well, after a lot of thought, and after the failure with, uh, with the star reactor, my thoughts are drifting away from this concept. And I no longer believe that it's the actual collision that causes the fusion event. Now, let us, um, let us imagine if, instead of being created at the ground potential, at the fuser shell, imagine if we could create an ion elsewhere in the fuser. So, let's imagine an ion halfway between the grid and the fuser shell, losing its electron at that point. So, instead of being up here, we're somewhere here, down here. If it loses its electron there, its swing will be significantly smaller. Its figure of eight orbit, or its uh, elliptical orbit, will be somewhere closer to the grid. And no doubt there are some of those ions in your fuser as well but the majority are probably created near the shell. Now, after thinking about that for a while, I realized that what we do need is we need more ions created near the grid, or in the grid. Because it is the, the electrostatic potential of the positive ion is the point where it was separated from its electron. So actually, the, the, the electrostatic potential of the atom, when it was ionized, it was, is what determines its energy in the potential energy well. And clearly, we want the ions to be near the grid, not near the shell. So we have to find a way to create ions 
in or near the grid. So this is, this is what's going to improve the fusion rates in our fusion reactors. And incidentally, I do believe that um, the, the positive results that are coming out of um, uh, beam on target uh, is due to the fact that a lot of the ions become embedded in the target and actually have a low potential and therefore fuse. The theory behind that is that ions, uh, the positive ions repel each other and when they find themselves at the bottom of the potential energy well and the temperature is high enough and the time is long enough, these ions want to get, they, they're not comfortable in this environment and they want to repel each other but if they're trapped in a potential energy well they can't get out. Now my thoughts here is that it is the a quantum effect which allows the two atoms to fuse because by fusing they can both manage to exit the potential energy well. See, we might have a potential energy well of 100 keV. These deuterons, by fusing, will both be able to escape the 100 keV potential energy well because they are releasing some of their binding energy and using it to accelerate a particle out of this confined area. So, what is the uh, what is the solution to uh, to the problem? And um, so, a couple of years ago, I uh, came up with an idea which I uh, wasn't able to um, put into practice because I didn't have a lab at the time. But I'm now working on on this idea, and I'm calling it for fix fusion. Fix stands for fusion induced charge separation. And I'll come to that a little later. But essentially, the idea is to store the fusion fuel, in other words, the deuterium, at cathode potential and slowly bleed the fuel into the cathode chamber at cathode potential and attempt to create the ions in the cathode. By doing that, the ions have no potential energy and are unable to escape the potential energy well without fusing. Now, the way that I hope to achieve that, and I'm working on the experiment at the moment, it's not finished and it's still a few months away from being finished, but the way I hope to achieve that is to attach a sample cylinder, which will be my fuel tank to the cathode at the end of an accelerator tube. Let me just move these things out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. We have here an accelerator tube and a hollow cathode. Inside this hollow cathode I have a tungsten sphere which is my reaction chamber. It has a hole at the bottom which is where the beam can enter and exit. Um, on top of the cathode, we have a sample cylinder with the fuel and a small bleed valve that will leak fuel into the cathode at the rate of about 1 cc/ccm. The, the theory is that um, uh, natural ionization that will occur in the tube at the high enough pressure will generate ions that will accelerate down towards the cathode and the cathode being of a differential pressure to the rest will create ionizing events inside the cathode which will then create a plasma in the cathode and this plasma will build up and build up and build up because it's unable to escape. The, the unknown here is how many neutrals will be able to escape but that can only be figured out by experiment in my opinion. So, which is why I'm doing this experiment which I call for fixed fusion. Now, the reason I call it for fixed fusion, which stands for fusion-induced charge separation, is because I anticipate that this reactor 
will in fact separate some charges. Now whether these charge separation is enough to maintain the reaction on its own, or whether I will still need external power supply, I don't know. I worked it out mathematically that the uh, reaction rate would have to be quite high in order for the fusion rate to become self-sustaining. But I, there's no reason why, if the system works, that we couldn't see fusion rates like 10 to the power of 14, which would make the system self-sustaining. What happens inside a hollow cathode is the ions inside, the plasma inside the cathode is very hot and as a result connects or bounces off the inside walls of the cathode. The protons are charged positive particles, they can't, they can't go through the tungsten cathode, but the electrons can. So what happens in a hot plasma, it tends to get uh, stripped of the electrons. The electrons will tend to go to the outside of the cathode, because they repel each other too, and hit the inside walls of the cathode more often than do the protons. So when the electrons go to the outside of the fuser shell, the ions remain inside. The ions that fuse will liberate a positive particle, an alpha particle. The alpha particle will shoot up the accelerator tube down this way, which I call up, and go to ground. So you can see we're getting a charge separation here. Electrons are going through the fuser shell, through the cathode shell, to the outside of the cathode, and the positive particles, which is the helium atom, or the alpha particle, is going up the accelerator tube against the 100,000 electron volts and going to ground. So we're actually getting, for every positive ion that goes to ground, we're climbing through a potential of 100,000 volts. So that's 100,000 electron volts for every escaping alpha particle. Now, multiply that by 10 to the power of 14, and you can see that you have some real watts happening through the system. And you might, in fact, get an electrical circuit happening around the outside of the fusion reactor, which, in my opinion, will make the power supply only necessary for the initial startup of the reactor. Will it work? Who knows? Now, in my opinion, the, um, there is, it's not worth doing an experiment unless it has at least a 50% chance of failure. And as with all of them, this one certainly has a 50% chance of failure. And um, I welcome all your suggestions and uh, ideas that might help to improve the system. And I also welcome experimentation. If somebody wants to try this experiment and, uh, and go with it, feel free. Uh, it's, uh, it's all contributing to, to the effort. Now, uh, I, did, I do have a patent on the um, floating fuel idea. Uh, it's only the beginning, um, and it's a patent application. It was published a couple of days ago. Um, but who knows, it might not, uh, might not be approved, uh, it might be rejected by the uh, patent authorities, we don't know. And I welcome any new ideas and anybody else who wants to discuss it with me, give me a call or send me an email. In the meantime, let's have a bit of fun talking about the idea and uh, see where it takes us. Thanks for watching.